you are well aware of who this individual is, Pearl's back, and um, it's a, um, I don't know, it's good to have Pearl back. Because yeah, I'm really excited and happy to be here. Thanks for so having me again. So, Pearl, I had a little bit of a brain snap. Well, it wasn't a brain snap, a moment yeah, of weakness. Yeah, a moment of weakness. And uh, <laughs> because of my busy schedule and um, not very good ability to return emails and phone calls, um, Pearl thought she had to have a haircut somewhere else. She's a little bit sort of down, so my job today is to try and make her fall in love with her hair again. Yeah, thank God I'm here. <laughs> I really need to be saved. <laughs> it's just a bit, yeah. But the colour is from last time I was here, and it's still incredible, even like with my roots showing a little bit. It just, it fades into it really nicely. That's good, so if you guys want to see that um, colour, you can go and have a look at the last video we did with Pearl. Um, it's got a bit of a crazy sort of thumbnail where her hair's sort of like jumping out everywhere, so it's easy to find. Yeah. Um, but we're going to make a bit blonder today, and we were talking about uh, maybe adding a tone that is a little bit less than conventional, maybe something silvery, pinky, pearl, violety around that. Um, we discussed like opaque peach sort of strawberry blonde, and we both decided that um, stay away from the warmer stuff. Cool is probably better. Yeah, for sure. Especially coming into summer, if I get a sunburn. <laughs> you look like a prawn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's hot in Australia. The sun here is on another level. It's too hot. Yeah. Um, with a haircut, we're actually going to um, do a layered sort of shaggy bob, um, which is a little bit different. Yeah. The beautiful thing about a bob shape and the reason why it's timeless is because it can make older women look and feel younger, but you also run the risk of making younger women look mature. Now, that's not bad. I'm not saying that you know it's only an old person's haircut, but we need to also make sure that when we're doing any shape of the hair, that it's suitable to our client, their lifestyle, and also their age. Um, I would never cut someone's hair based on their age. So if someone would come to me and say, oh, I think I'm too young, or, or think I'm too old for that haircut, I would say that you know age doesn't determine how you can or can't wear your hair. It's purely lifestyle and whether you're comfortable or not comfortable wearing it. So um, it's just, I think that sometimes you can make people look mature so and it's not that it's it's about being young or whatever but let's be honest none of us really want to get older than what we have to quicker than what we have to sorry yeah. so i think today um by getting it off pearl's shoulders making it almost like a, a shaggy sort of uh laid bob she showed me some photos that was sort of almost like my hair where it, it's sort of like a little bit scrunch dried not that i do that it dries naturally i've got curly hair but not blow dried straight all the time so coming into some other in australia the reason why that's relevant is we love the water so we're going to be in and out and for Pearl to be able to like put some um, product in her hair and let it dry naturally and get it sort of noodly and wavy would be yeah. amazing. And so. I'm going to the beach next week. Best. So we better have a chat to her about looking after her colour if she's going to be swimming a lot. Yeah. Because it's going to pull. Actually, salt water is amazing. Pool water is not so good for pulling colour. It's, yeah, no, it's really amazing. hard on um, the hair. So without further ado, um, we're going to start with your colour today. So we're going to focus on um, making those roots disappear. Um, there will be parts of the hair that I'm going to actually take the colour through. Um, I'll make sure that I'm, I'm protecting the hair uh, using additives. I'll also um, step down on my developer. I'll use like uh, 20, uh, sorry, 30 volt to bring up the natural hair and I'll probably use 20 volt, maybe even uh, 10 volt to just clean out the blonde because we want to have areas where it looks brighter than others and then we're going to tone it. Then we'll do your haircut awesome. later on. I'm so excited. I am too. All right. Um, I'm going to head out the back, get mixed up, and when you come back, I'll have a chat to you about the colour technique I'm going to do. Mixed up our colour. I've got um, a little piece of foil on this one. This tells me that this has got 20 vol. The one without the 20 vol. Oh, sorry, the foil is um, 30 vol. I'm going to do a combination of slices and weaves on pearl. Um, the weaves are going to be for, as I mentioned already, I want to actually have some brighter pieces through there, and then the slices and the weaves combined will address the regrowth. So. Starting here in the nape, and while the section allows me to, I've got white foil. I'm actually going to um, um, just use one foil in the back, but then as we go up the head and it gets wider, you can see I've split into two sections, so I would do, will do two um, separate foils. So where I start to get to the hair and it's long, I'll use um, 30 vol on the root area, on the regrowth, and then on the ends, um, I'll just use uh, 20 volt.
even with the uh, amazing technology we have at our um, disposal um, in terms of products that allow us to push the boundaries when we lighten hair, we still need to remember that there's actually um, a lot of research based on science that has taught us well before these amazing products came along. Um, they taught us how to lighten hair correctly without damaging it. And I think that we should never rely on our products alone to protect the integrity of the hair. I think we can also rely on technique, which is why I'm choosing to use two different developers, so two different strength lighteners. As I go up where I'm gonna to need to preserve the length, um, as I already said, here where um, the hair's pretty much gonna be cut off, I'm not too concerned about the ends getting a little bit fragile, because essentially the, the existing blonde will most likely, um, well not most likely, I'm 99% I'm sure all of it will come off when we adjust the length of the hair. As we go up and the hair gets longer, we obviously have to make sure that um, we look after the integrity of the hair because um, we're not cutting that off and you can do the best colour in the world, but if the uh, condition is no good, well, um, that sort of brings it all undone. So remember to use the science and understand how to colour hair um, before we go relying on products. Those products just provide us a buffer so we can push boundaries. They don't, they don't substitute the knowledge of lightning hair, so important to remember. That was, that was quite the effort actually. Um, we're all done here, so all the foils are in. Um, the back is processed, ready to be rinsed. So uh, I'm obviously gonna get Pearl over to the base. Now we're gonna rinse the back. Uh, when you come back, um, the hair is going to be uh, processed. Actually, we may tone it at the basin. Um, so we're gonna let that process, get it as light as we can. I wanna stretch her root to just make it a, you know, a little bit more depth, especially around the hairline. And then we're going to talk about tone. So we're gonna try and aim for that sort of pearly, violety colour, pardon the pun, not pearl name, violet, that's not the intention, but it's pretty funny, uh, not really, beautiful name, and um, obviously those, those are all dependent on how light we get it, so it's really important that we don't freak out and rinse it too quickly, but when it's ready to come off, it's ready to come off, and the back is definitely ready, so um, we're going to get out of the basin, get that started, when you come back, we'll talk some more colour. We are back from the basin, uh, lightning's done, I'm going to dry it off. Um, and then once it's dry, I'm gonna make a decision on what sort of tone I'm gonna to do. Um, as I said before we started, it, it's, it's dictated basically by how light we can get the hair. And you know, you can do toners, but you may have to counteract underlying tones as you lighten. So let's dry it off and we'll see what we come up with. Color looks good. I was just saying to Pearl, we could probably leave it like this. Um, we're not going to though. Um, we're gonna stretch a root, probably just like about this much. I'm actually gonna do it quite dark because um, it'll make the ends look even lighter. And then we're going for, as I said, like a violet, pearly, silvery sort of tone through the rest. Um, but I'm actually probably just going to use like a clear base and put tone in it because I do not want to darken the ends at all. Um, maybe I might take it down half a level, if that. So we're going to aim around that level 10 sort of colour, I think. So into the back room, mix some more colour up and I'll be straight back. Let's get the toner on. Going for a level five violet. So 
50% depth. If this is a level 10, the roots are going to be um, five shades deeper. And that should be pretty epic, actually. Let's hope, at least, anyway. Fingers crossed. Pearl. All right, our uh, root colour is on. Um, we're going to go straight over to the basin and um, we're going to put the um, end colour on. But before we do that, I'm actually going to um, mix up my end colour so I've got it there, put it straight on. So when I rinse the root colour off, I don't have to worry about it bleeding into the ends because as I said, I want them to stay as light as we can. If we were to rinse this now, we run the risk of it going into the end. So it's better to have the colour on there on the ends as a buffer. That way, when you rinse it all together, uh, less chance of like getting the colours all muddled up and then it starts looking muddy and we actually really want strong definition so um, when uh, Pearl returns to the chair the colour will be done. Colour's done, a little bit of pre-drying, not too much. You can see we've got that beautiful um, violet hue coming out of the root area. And then hopefully it's just that hint of platinum. We didn't want to go too white and silver because I think that they could look grey and I'm not really into that too much. I mean, it, it can look really good, but I find it just, sometimes it can look a bit weird. I'm gonna start in the back and get this length to where we need it to be. We're just gonna use solid form. Head this way for me. Thank you, darling. Length in the back's been cut, so now I'm just going <coughs> to spin pelt to the side. Just chin up for me, darling, just like you normally would if you were just sitting up straight. Actually, if you could slide your bum all the way back, see up nice and straight, that'd be good. Just like, yep, perfect. Again, we want to make sure we're just doing it at natural fall. You don't want to stretch it over the ear, just make sure that it's not stuck behind there. You can tilt the head slightly off centered just so it gives you a little bit of um, room here on the shoulder. We just want to make sure that we're cutting it at the right length. Or you can do what I've done previously. Just look over your left shoulder for me. Now all of a sudden you don't have to worry about um, the shoulder at all. And again, just very gently combing it down. Don't stretch. Just 
got beat down on the other side. Again, just look under here, make sure there's no hair stuck behind the ear, but at the same time, you don't want to comb it over it too heavy. And we just, you literally like lift out, let it drop. After much debate, Pearl and I have decided that we're going to actually um, grow her fringe, as we call them out here, in or down under here, um, into bangs because we just feel like it's gotten a little bit wide and we just want to let it grow out and then <clears throat> we can revisit it. Especially you guys have seen me do this before, nice triangle section. I'm going to use the existing length um, as a guide. Um, and then I'm going to shift it, shift the distribution all the way to the back to over direct it to retain length. So there's the guideline in the front there. I'll spin around so you can see how I shift it back. Goes all the way back here like that. It falls out and that's where I'm going to do it. Just point cut that a little bit, but we'll adjust that again when it's, um, dry so now what it allows us to do if you have a look it's just created depth here and length there so now it's going to do this so now as Pearl cuts it I'm um, sorry as when Pearl styles it it's going to sit to the side and it's now going to grow out much better let's start the layering in the back this is what we're up to now. So I don't want to overlay this haircut and I need to be careful about how short I do the layers because we don't want to create a mullet sort of effect. Yes, I am point cutting the ends. If you guys are like, oh, he's finally point cutting the hair. It's because the texture I want in this haircut needs to be point cutted. So seeing as I've got it sectioned already, I thought I might do that. Yep. Good. All right. So I get you to put your head up, Pearl. Let me just come around here. Make sure the section is good. Yep. Back. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to do some soft layering. Let's talk about different types of shapes you can give a layering. Chin down just a bit, babe. Okay, so if we go and cut the hair and we layer it in a traditional sense, when this falls, you're gonna end up with a big weight line. We wanna do the opposite. We wanna put the short hair on the top and leave the long hair underneath. So I need to come and flip around to this way. And then, so instead of going this way, we need to go that way. So we need to go short to, to long. So our section's here, and we can still do them quite short, but we just need to make sure that we put the short hair on top of the long hair, and you'll see why. You can see the short hair, long hair there. So what it's always gonna do is it's never gonna give you that bell end where it goes in and out, because that's a really classic shape, which quite frankly, I've never been a fan of. Um, obviously, classic hair cutting, there's always a place for it. And of course we need to know how to create that shape, but we want to avoid doing that. So if we did it square or uniform, you're going to get that really pronounced kick into the nape. We want to have like almost like um, shaggy, soft layers that when we blow dry the hair, it doesn't look over layered. And when we dry it naturally, it sits really well. Um, and I think, well, for me, fr from my experience, this is the best way to do that. Um, so now, once we've got our guideline in the middle, we're just going to work uniform from left to right, always taking half the last section and incorporating into the next one. So you've always got your guideline. And then as we get to the side here, because of the angle, we'll probably run out of hair. There won't be that much to cut. And then we can cross check horizontally. 
Everything you cut vertically can always be checked horizontally and vice versa. And then while we're up here, we'll just give it a little bit of point cutting, but not too much. Just a tiny, tiny bit. So that nice and square. And then just in here, just to create separation. And this is just to create, as I just said, separation so the hair can actually uh, mesh together better. I'll spin pearl back around so you can see that effect. We'll just loosen it up so you can see from that angle and then we'll loosen it up so you can see from this angle, which pops the head up. You can see it's soft, so now we're gonna follow that all the way through here. Same as when we cross check the back, we're just point cutting. We don't want to disrupt the cutting line or the shape. We just want to create room so the hair doesn't stack out too much. Smooth setter makes everything better. moved it off and now we just need to personalize and add texture because as I said throughout the wetting the wet part of the cutting we need to allow room for the hair to expand not expand it's just like instead of being like this you cut gaps and then it can just mesh together a little bit better it doesn't it's just stacks way, way better. So now we're going to go through and very gently point cut this to soften it all. This will also help with the... All we need to do is um, use... Uh, well, if we're at the beach and you get your hair wet, well, that's perfect because the, the salt water from the sea is an amazing product to create that beachy look, hence where they get the name beachy look. Um, there are um, an array of products that you can also use like sea salt texturizing products. Matrix have one called Rocket Texture. That's um, the best way. And obviously we didn't, didn't let it dry naturally today because um, you just can't accurately um, personalize. Well, I can't anyway, I should only have to speak for myself, but I don't believe you can accurately texturize and personalize haircuts like this when they have movement in them because the hair's not straight, you just can't. You just can't do it accurately enough. So we've smoothed it, um, but when I rough it up at the end, you'll be able to see the type of shape that will be um, created by allowing it to dry naturally. Now we're just going to, 
while we're on this side, work horizontally underneath, always projecting at at least 90 degrees. Like any technique when we cut, the closer we go to zero with our project, or the closer we are to zero with our projection, the more solid the hair is, and that's even if you're layering. So if you, I know that sounds confusing, but if you texturize at um, natural fall, it's gonna be far more chunky. If you texturize above 90 degrees, it actually falls quite soft and seamless. So really important that we, um, we follow the same theories as we do when we're cutting um, foundation shape. So the further away from zero we project the hair and cut it, the softer it falls, and the closer to zero we project, well, the closer to natural fall and we cut it, the more uh, solid it, it um, falls. So um, the same applies when we're texturizing. This way for me, darling. Thank you. Back to doing the hair underneath. Big shout out to all the lovers and the haters that have an opinion on my hair at the moment. <laughs> it's definitely divided the, uh, the hair tubers, that's for sure. So in the comment section, you want me to cut my hair off? Let's, uh, actually, you know what, I'll do, I'll do a poll. Because I know on, um, on YouTube, on my story feed on YouTube, you actually can do polls. So I'll do a poll and if you want to go on, we'll cut it off. And then we're going to review a pearl to the hair tubers and see what you guys think. It's just super rock star, man. Rock on. I'm glad you love it. Yeah, I love it so much. It's really cool. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted something more edgy, less vanilla. <laughs> no one can see me. You're taking up all the space. It's the last <laughs> video of the year. They've got to see me too. No, I think, um, like we said, I, I think it is about finding that balance between having a... Um, that um, sort of, you know, uber cool, shaggy, but, you know, um, Pearl works in a pharmacy, you know, she suspenses medication for people aren't well, you know, she can't go in there looking like she's about to slay the world on stage with a guitar. Sometimes it's yes, important. Can. Well, if you can, that's <laughs> great, but the amount of times as a hairdresser, I'm asked, look, yeah, in the daytime, I've got to like, yeah, but at night, like, I want to be able to be myself. And yeah. that's what this is about. This is about yin and yang. It's about being able to do all that. So I had a lot of fun, rock star. Yeah, it's super shag, I love it. Perfect. Well, the last one for 2020 is done, and I think we left on a really cool note. Yeah. Um, hair's banging, Pearl's great. She lets me do a like. She's like a channel favorite. She said today she was really stoked that she's in my intro. I am, I'm in the intro <laughs> every video. I'm so honored. 
No, it's uh, always great to, great to um, have you here. And I think uh, everyone at home appreciates it too. I think um, when you have beautiful young people come in, they need to be experimental and have some fun with their hair. It always makes the day better. Uh, thanks for a great year, guys. Um, it's been amazing and uh, an incredible journey. Well, I think, I think I hit my target of 30 videos or 35 videos, which is um, essentially almost one a week, given that we, um, we had a bit of a crappy year with COVID. To get as many done as I did, I think it was a bit of an epic, epic effort. Um, so thanks again for your channel, uh, for the support of the channel. I mean, you know, you guys are my motivation. I'm motivated by the comments. You enjoy the work I'm doing, so I'll keep doing it. And on that note, if there's something you want to see, you can um, email me, you can uh, leave a comment on the video. And I'm already starting uh, planning for 2021. I actually would like to hit the 40 video mark, which is essentially like one every, one every week. Um, if you take out the holiday periods and stuff like that, so that'll be super cool. So I'm going to need some ideas on haircuts. So help me out a bit, huh? Um, again, thanks for your support and for the people who send me messages of support and leave comments and take the time to write nice messages. I do read them and I do appreciate it. And for those who write some that aren't so nice, well, that's fine too because I'm not perfect and I don't claim to be. So I think it's time for a beer. Yeah. All right. See you guys. We're out. Take care and uh, happy holidays. Bye.